Over the last 140 years, the Tata Group has been India's best known and most respected business group, a name synonymous with trust and integrity. With the takeover of the two British automobile makers, Jaguar and Land Rover, the Tata Group has embarked on an acquisition spree in the last few years. The group has unleashed its global ambitions with eight of its top 10 acquisitions being overseas. This video will discuss the impact of globalization on the development of Tata Group and the key global strategies of Tata Group operating companies. The reason why the Tata Group acquired Land Rover and Jaguar and its future perspective will come up. Since 2000, Tata Group started to internationalize their business and wanting to be a global player. Tata was at the leading edge of emerging market by merging with, with a company that is blooming in global market. Merger and acquisition is an important factor to step themselves into international market. However, merger and acquisition is not a flying color. Tata faced financial burden and management challenge as well. well to continue to regarding the driving force why Tata wants to go global is due to financial crisis in Asia at the end of 1990s. However, India was an effect on a big deal, but still, this is a start to avoid economic risk. Therefore, Tata decided to spread the risk by conducting business outside their country as well. Of this obstruction is limited infrastructure in India. However, going globalization helped the firm to reach economic of scale, not just in terms of production, but also economic of scale on research and development and branding. Globalization helped reparaging in the domestic market. In addition, going global gives them access to new technology and market. Moving on to the assessment of the role of Tata Group Center in Group's globalization. The Tata Group Center's problem to push the operating companies to use all the money gifted to them. This helped create better cooperation in strategy and put forward its strength in the competitive business world. The Group Center also helped bring about valuable initiatives by having operation companies in the same country exchange idea. So the Group Center is able to assess potential possibilities from a wider view than operating companies. The Group Center has therefore helped the operating companies to reach its target. Well, as for the Tata Group managed globalization as a collection of disparate companies, the Group starts umbrella, umbrella operation to help globalization of group companies. Tata starts to operate office in their key market to help deal with media relation and coordination with media relation. Also in 2007, Tata helped sharing information between company by launching global internet to all Tata Group companies. Well, that will be it. Thank you. The introduction of liberalization and globalization in India provided challenges as well as opportunities for many Indian firms. Regulation required foreign firms to tie up with domestic companies. The reputation of Tata Group made it a sought-after partner for many foreign investors. Companies such as AT&T, IBM, Silicon Graphics and Cummins Engines made strategic partnerships with the company which helped them to develop global competence in the marketplace. So the strategies for each Tata company is as follows. Tata Steel is one of the lowest cost steel producer in, work in the world and they had access to many suppliers of iron ore. Tata Steel is seeking to access into a well established market. So they're looking for car steel, a well established brand name in EU. But well, it was not very cost efficient and it is operation. So they, they look for 
car sale to achieve global percent to service global, global buyer in multiple locations. Acquisition made the uh, made the increase in percent in Australia, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, and China. The advantage of the acquisition is that they can access raw material, and then they acquire additional source of raw material outside of India. So they can source vast majority of raw material, and that is the advantage of the acquisition. So they help protect the company from global price fluctuation. So this has made Tata Steel from the six of the world to the six of the world. Thank you. The slow growth of the tea industry in India meant that Tata needed to pursue growth elsewhere. Technically, the UK-based tea company was the only global brand that was not owned by a conglomerate such as Unilever or Nestle. At that time, Tata was three times the size of Tata which showed the world what Tata was capable of. The company saw merger and acquisition as the best route both to seek new growth opportunities and transform itself into a global tea company. For Tata Consultancy Service, the nature of its industry and the limited demand for its service in India, it could not have built a business of significant size relying solely on the domestic market. Therefore, beginning in 2001, TCS used the mergers and acquisitions in India and overseas to make targeted additions to its technological capabilities and to accelerate the process of building a presence in new markets. The famous acquisition was on 8 October 2008. Tata Consultancy Service to acquire all of City's interest in City Group Global Service Limited for 505 million, which broadens TCS portfolio of end-to-end -end IT and BPO service in the global banking and finance service sector. TCS enhanced scale and expertise will provide service improvement to city and the city's customers. Strategy for Indian hotels. Indian hotels? In terms of globalizations, they do a shift to a preference for management contracts with small equity positions in the properties instead of outright ownerships. They do expansions and also they do a merger and acquisitions to get a brand reputation. That's hotels, for example, they establish a presence in international markets in a parts to build seamless connectivity to global customers who would also be potential customers of the company's properties in India. Tata Motors can be seen as the best example of the group's international acquisition success. Having severely hit by the downturn in commercial vehicle business and financially taxing research projects, they look for new avenues to regain their market position. They incrementally pursued the channel of acquiring foreign technology to regain their competitive position. Joint ventures with companies like Fiat and Marco Polo and Takeover of Devu are some of the examples. Also, the success of Tata Nano and the purchase of Jaguar and Land Rover established Tata Motors as a, a global automotive giant, now setting their eyes on to tap the American and Chinese markets. Mergers and acquisition meant that Tata did not have to always start at the beginning of each internationalizing step saving them time and effort to globalize. It also meant that they could benefit from what the acquired company has already achieved, such as the market presence, the technology, the supply chain, or the local knowledge. The competitive advantage of internationalizing into these locations are, firstly, they could gain particular resources, such as raw materials, which at the end can lead them to a bigger economic scale. Secondly, new technology gained from each particular location can be implemented into their communication system, operating system, supply chain, which may become a competitive advantage. Thirdly, by using merger and acquisition, they can also avoid government regulations or country barriers at particular locations. However, in order to utilize this advantage, Tata must have enough capability to implement it. Going internationally or globally opens up to opportunities but also creates risk. Acquiring or merging with a company can be the first step, but it is a whole other challenge to fully synergize advantages. Feeling my way through the darkness, guided by a beating heart. I can't tell where the journey will end, but I know.
but I know where to start. Tata Motors view Jaguar and Land Rover as a perfect kickstart for its global journey and a comfortable access channel to the European and American markets. Although the purchase came with sufficient conditions from the union and a substantial risk to the company's cash flow situation, the management was banking on the cost competitiveness of it would have of having Chorus, the main supplier of automotive high-grade steel to Jaguar and Land Rover, under the group umbrella, to overcome the challenges of operating profitability and also providing synergy within the group. In addition, the deal elim helped Tata eliminate the initial stage problems like internal noise and vibration in its core products like Indica and Safari. Having said that, a price tag of 2.3 billion wasn't really justified, but the groups thought it was, and their, their plan to acquire it was to secure a global footprint in the uh, automobile market. And also, the, in addition to the two advanced design studios that they acquired as a part of the deal was a very beneficial step. They could have even sought the mode of entering markets through commercial vehicles and the spare part business, which would be in line with the traditional routes as many questioned Tata Motors' competence in handling luxury brands like these. It was seen as a company of mass markets catering to low and middle income groups only. But the drastic improvements in Jaguar and Land Rover's profitability in recent years confirms to the management's capability and the decision to acquire it. Now having a wide array of vehicles under their roof, from heavy trucks to luxurious cars, Tata Motors is truly a representation of a, country, of a company catering to every segment of the market. They never hesitated to take bold steps and with the conscious support of the group center, they were able to increase their operations to a global scale. We are quite certain that we firms like Tata for emerging markets are rising to overtake and compete head to head with established multinational enterprises. For example, Tata Motors is not the first emerging automaker to buy a Western brand in order to upgrade to Nanjing Nanjing Automobile Group purchased MG Rover, a British firm that was Tata's former partner back in 2005. The world is becoming globalized through social, political, technological and economical factors. Firm will be driven to go global with drivers such as the market driver, the government driver, the cost and competitive drivers. These drivers, along with the increase in globalization, will push firms from emerging market to do what Tata did. There are four strategies for tired countries to respond to emerging markets such as Tata groups. First one is Dodgers, which is concerning on a locally oriented link in the value chains enters a joint ventures or sells out to a multinationals. The second one is contenders, which is focusing on upgrading capabilities and resources to match multinationals globally, often by keeping to niche market. The third one is defenders, which is concerning on leveraging local assets in market segments where multinationals are weak. The fourth one is extenders, which is concerning on expanding into markets similar to those of the home base, using competencies developed at home.